One of the unique things about a high rail 3D printer is the ability to use up to four individual print heads. This allows you to print multiple parts simultaneously, as well as multiple materials on a single build. This video will show you how to calibrate your print heads when using more than one. First bring the bed to where it just barely makes contact with the lowest head. Once the bed is in place, loosen the set screw located on the back of the head or heads you plan on calibrating. Then loosen the pair of 2.5mm hex screws located just above the set screw. Gently press down on the body of the print head until it makes contact with the bed. Then retighten the set screw. Next you will need to set the adjustment block. This will ensure that the head comes to this calibrated position the next time it is installed. Press down on the block until it makes contact with the yoke. Then retighten the 2.5mm hex screws. Your MK1s are now calibrated to your machine. I will be showing you how to slice an object for printing with two materials. I am using Repitrail version 2.828, so more recent Repitrail versions will be slightly different as well as older ones will be slightly different. First, you will want to load your STL files in the same way you would with a single print, only loading both files at once. Simply go to Object, Add STL File, and load the file you are looking for. Then you will want to place the two STL files where they belong on the bed. In this case, they have been modeled with the same origin, so I simply have to click the red center button and it will place them where I want them. However, if this is not the case, you can use the XYZ offsets to put them where you do want them. You can clearly see here how there is no overlap and the two pieces are perfectly placed next to each other. Once you have these positioned, you will want to go to Process, Open Slick 3R Multi-Print Editor. This will open up a plater for you, however it will take a little bit to load. Once the plater is open, you will want to click and drag one of the STL files over to the plater. You will see a green bar hop on on the bottom and you wait for that to completely fill out. Then you can go to your print settings and select print. Since there is only one print setting, select the slowest or the most finicky material first and then select the filaments afterwards. Select the filaments to match up properly with the materials and the particular heads you'll be using in the correct order. Once you've done this, you may want to go into the printer settings and change the custom G-code a little bit for your printer. There's a specific area that called the tool change G-code where it allows you to insert a set of commands for the printer to execute every time it commits a tool change. This can be set as anything you want. The particular settings I have here should be posted online for you to copy onto your own printer. Alright, now that all of this is set up, go back to the plater and double click on the STL you dragged on a moment ago. This will open up a little pop-up window, and here's where all of the true multi-print editing will go on. Simply select Add Part and pick the part that you didn't choose to add earlier, and the window will add that. Now, you simply have to go and select each one individually and tell it which extruder to go on to. Be very careful to select the correct extruder, as this will translate into the G-code and be incredibly difficult to fix later. Also, depending on what part you do, if there is overlaps, you may want to also load a modifier and add the extruder number for that for the part that is being modified. Once you've done this, simply click OK, and the program will automatically begin slicing this for you, which you can go over into Preview and view a basic preview of the slice G-code. If this looks good, go over to Export G-code, press that, find the folder you are looking for, and export the G-code. 
Once this is done, wait until export G code becomes clickable again, at which point it will have actually sliced it and saved it into a file where you chose it to. Since Repetrel expects you to be printing with a single material only using dual extruders, there's a few things you'll have to go into and change manually in the G-code. This can be done in any text editor or it can be done in Repetrel itself. I'm using a text editor here simply for convenience. Um, it is Notepad++, you can use Notepad or the inbuilt Repetrel G-code editor. The first thing you'll want to change in this program are the M104 values which set the temperature for each head. You'll want to go in for the first one and change it to T12 which will select head number 2 and set that temperature. Similarly for the next one you'll have M104 T13 and whatever temperature that material will be at which T13 selects the third head. This is the same idea if you're selecting the fourth head or the first head as well. Next, you will want to comment out the M109 command, which can simply be done by pressing a semicolon in front of it. This command tells the extruders to wait until the temperature comes up to the proper temperature, and will also reset your temperature. So just be aware that you have to have the heads preheated before attempting to print this, otherwise it will attempt to print it at a low temperature. Next, you'll want to use the find function, either control F on notepad or the find function on Repetrel, to find the next instance of M104. In this case, my find function is set to go upwards, so I have to go through a few of the commented out M104s to find what I'm looking for. This command is to tell the heads to turn off. If you don't do this, it will not correctly communicate with the printer and it will only actually turn off one of the heads, which can be potentially dangerous if you leave it overnight. So simply use the same technique you used above and control each one of the heads to turn off. One other command that you will want to play with a little bit is the M106 command, which is the fan controls. This is actually controlled in the same way as the temperature is going M106 T12 S50. However, in this case, I simply deleted it because I did not want a fan on. But you can control the fans to turn on individually. Now with all this done, just save your file or in Repetrel, just refresh your 3D view, and you can go, and here I will take it back into Repetrel, and now it is a completely printable function, although you may want to check your coloration to be sure that it is the proper nozzles going for each material. For some reason, the G-code file actually comes out about a centimeter offset from the STL files you will have loaded previously. However, this should not be a major problem unless you are printing an extremely large part. You can simply suppress the previous STLs if you think you may need to use them again, or delete them if you want. Here I'll just suppress them. You can quick take a look at this through single layer view, make sure everything is correct as it is in this case. It is done and is ready to be printed, and that is all for the software. Thank you for watching.